The other goldsmiths were doing the same thing. They created money out of nothing at the stroke of a pen and then charged interest on top of it. True, they didn't coin money. The government actually printed the notes and coins and gave it to the goldsmiths to distribute. Still, they were creating credit money out of nothing and charging interest on top of it. Most people believe that the money supply was a government operation. They also believe that Fabian was lending them the money that someone else had deposited. But it was very strange that no one's deposits ever decreased when a loan was advanced. If everyone had tried to withdraw their deposits at once, the fraud would have been exposed. When a loan was requested in notes or coins, it presented no problem. One day, a thoughtful man went to see Fabian. This interest charge is wrong, he said. For every $100 you issue, you are asking $105 in return. The extra $5 can never be paid since it doesn't exist. Farmers produce food, industry manufacturers goods and so on, but only you produce money. Suppose there are only two businessmen in the whole country and we employ everyone else. We borrow $100 each, we pay $90 out in wages and expenses and allow $10 profit. That's our wage. That means the total purchasing power is $90 plus $10 twice is $200. Yet to pay you, we must sell our produce for $210. If one of us succeeds and sells all his produce for $105, the other man can only hope to get $95. Also, part of his goods cannot be sold, as there is no money left to buy them. He will still owe you $10 and can only repay this by borrowing more. The system is impossible. The man continued, Surely you should issue $105, which is $100 to me and $5 to you, to spend. This way, there would be $105 in circulation and the debt can be repaid. Fabian listened quietly and finally said, Financial economics is a deep subject, my boy. It takes years of study. Let me worry about these matters and you look after yours. You must become more efficient, increase your production, cut down on your expenses and become a better businessman. I'm always willing to help in these matters. The man went away still unconvinced. There was something wrong with Fabian's operations and he felt that his questions had been avoided. Yet most people respected Fabian's word. He is the expert. The others must be wrong. Look how the country has developed, how our production has increased. We must be better off. To cover the interest on the money they had borrowed, merchants were forced to raise their prices. Wage earners complained that their wages were too low. Employers refused to pay higher wages, claiming that they would be ruined. Farmers could not get a fair price for their produce. Housewives complained that food was getting too dear. And finally some people went on strike. Others had become poverty stricken and their friends and relatives could not afford to help them. Most had forgotten the real wealth all around. The fertile soils, the great forests, the minerals and cattle. They could only think of the money which always seemed so scarce. But they never questioned the system. They believed the government was running it. A few had pooled their excess money and formed lending or finance companies. They could get 6% or more this way, which was better than the 3% Fabian paid. But they could only lend out the money they owned. They did not have this strange power of being able to create money out of nothing by merely writing figures in books. These finance companies worried Fabian and his friends somewhat, so they quickly set up a few companies of their own. Mostly, they bought the others out before they got going. In no time, all the finance companies were owned by them or under their control. The economic situation got worse. The wage earners were convinced that the bosses were making too much profit. The bosses said that their workers were too lazy and weren't doing an honest day's work. And everyone was blaming everyone else. The governors could not come up with an answer. And besides, the immediate problem seemed to be to help the poverty-stricken. They started up welfare schemes and made laws forcing people to contribute to them. This made many people angry. They believed in the old-fashioned idea of helping one's neighbor by voluntary effort. These laws are nothing more than legalized robbery. To take something off a person against his will, regardless of the purpose for which it's to be used, is no different than stealing. Before long, the problem was back. 
and more money was needed to cope. The cost of these schemes rose higher and higher and the size of government grew. Most of the governors were sincere men, trying to do their best. They didn't like asking for more money from their people and finally, they had no choice but to borrow money from Fabian and his friends. They had no idea how they were going to repay. Parents could no longer afford to pay teachers for their children. They couldn't pay doctors and transport operators were going out of business. One by one, the government was forced to take these operations over. Teachers, doctors and many others became public servants. Few obtained satisfaction in their work. They were given a reasonable wage, but they lost their identity. They became small cogs in a giant machine. There was no room for personal initiative, little recognition for effort, their income was fixed, and advancement came only when a superior retired or died. In desperation, the governors decided to seek Fabian's advice. Many people cannot solve their own problems. They need someone to do it for them. Surely you agree that most people have the right to be happy and to be provided with the essentials of life. One of our great sayings is, all men are equal, is it not? Well, the only way to balance things up is to take the excess wealth from the rich and give it to the poor. Introduce a system of taxation. The more a man has, the more he must pay. Collect taxes from each person according to his ability and give to each according to his need. Oh, and by the way, don't forget you owe me money. You've been borrowing now for quite some time. The least I can do to help is for you to just pay me the interest. We'll leave the capital debt owing. Just pay me the interest. They went away, and without giving Fabian's philosophies any real thought, they introduced the graduated income tax. The more you earn, the higher your tax rate. Merchants were forced once again to raise their prices. Wage earners demanded higher wages, forcing many employers out of business or to replace men with machinery. This caused additional unemployment and forced the government to introduce further welfare and handout schemes.